Hey everyone, we're here to talk a little bit about Bitcoin DeFi. I'm Omar Hussain, the general manager at IOG. Um, and we're going to go over some, some progress that we made over the few, past few months. So we're going to follow this order in most of the presentations henceforth about Bitcoin DeFi. So we're going to talk about the context, the solution, the proof, meaning the proof of demand, and then uh, open up the space for you for if you want pilot intakes. So over the years, we've seen um, a bunch of different things happen in the Bitcoin space. We've seen, we've tried custodial wrapping, we've uh, tried side chains, we've moved on. Oh, uh, custodial wrapping, side chains like RSK, Liquid, um, and we've also had Lightning Network, as you know, and then smart contract overlays, right? So each has added utility, but introduced different types of trade-offs. There's been custody problems, liquidity fragmentation, and pretty complex trust dynamics as well as UX frictions. So we know that patterns have been repeating. Wrapping moves risk over to the custodian. Some L2s and side chase add opaque trust and fragment liquidity. And wrapped collateral works, but only until cross-chain plumbing is stressed. So what we want in Bitcoin DeFi is really those benefits without all of the weaknesses. Um, and as the timeline kind of shows, the Bitcoin spent its first decade forging its identity as the world's most trusted digital asset. This is what we refer to as the foundational era. And over the past few years, we've plunged into what we're terming as the experimentation era where a chaotic and explosive period of innovation took place with ordinals, with early roll-ups, um, and a fierce battle for liquidity that proved the overwhelming demand to do more with Bitcoin. And today, we think we're standing at the productive era, where all this raw experimentation is in its very early days, but solidifying into a mature, high-throughput financial infrastructure and we really think this is a pivotal moment to get involved as the foundational work is barely strong enough to build on, but just strong enough to get that sort of growth engine kicked off. And here's some data to back this up, right? So we see that in yellow, there's uh, around 2017, Bitcoin's vision and narrative is really around censorship resistant e-gold. But look at what's happened in pink since 2020. Um, Bitcoin as an uncorrelated financial asset has been the narrative that's been picking up from innovation uh, institutions and funds. So these are different type of Bitcoin holders. They're fundamentally different, right? They aren't Bitcoin maxis hodling forever and hoping that Bitcoin price rises. They're investors, they're treasury companies, they're ETFs. And what they really care about is capital efficiency. Their mindset is all around yield, liquidity, and programmable access without giving up on Bitcoin's core principles. So this is why we think a shift towards Bitcoin DeFi isn't just imminent or possible, but it's almost necessary at this point. Um, so what are the core principles of Bitcoin? So Charles Hoskinson has previously talked about three simple rules of Bitcoin. So that's, um, you can look it up, uh, some of the videos from the Bitcoin conference in Vegas. So any Bitcoin DeFi solution must use Bitcoin for security, Bitcoin for fees, and Bitcoin for yields. You break one of these and you break Bitcoin. So these rules pretty much anchor everything that we built within the space. Um, and IOG has built Cardano with UTXO friendliness in mind. So by linking Bitcoin's UTXO to Cardano's EUTXO, we combine that settlement assurance you have with Bitcoin with the programmability of the extended UTXO model, right? That's, a, that's primarily what we consider the engine for a liquidity flywheel. So what is our solution? This is a very simplified roadmap that focuses on the outcomes we hope to achieve over the next year. We can get into the technical elements in different presentations, and you're welcome to look up at our docs. But, and we'll be publishing the roadmap over time. Um, but the idea is pretty simple. You start with the yield, you unlock liquidity, you build credit, and you enable the builders. So caveat here, this may look like a few sub protocols, but this is actually one protocol. A builder is gonna interact with this through the same plug and play SDK. 
right? So first is the yield protocol. Real yield means that it will not be in the form of some inflationary crypto token that has no utility within the ecosystem. It's going to be in Bitcoin. And we're partnering with yield partners to really, uh, who can use that Bitcoin that's deposited within the protocol and give back returns. The equity protocol, which is the next uh, part of our roadmap, unlocks the programmable uh, liquidity. So that's fungible Bitcoin that can be used within DeFi. So, um, and pretty much any DeFi protocol at this point. Next, we'll have the lending protocol that creates the non-custodial credit markets at the protocol level. So the builders can use pretty much all of these parts of the SDK to set up a launch pad. So think your own variant of DEXs, order books, or create pretty much any app that needs to use Bitcoin from bounty systems to derivative systems. So these are four, stra uh, four steps, one track, compounding utility for both users and for builders. Most people consider trust in Bitcoin DeFi as a yes or a no. Either you trust a custodian or you don't. But in reality, there's actually a spectrum of trust models. And where you sit on that spectrum defines both your risk as well as your UX. Right? So we started with the custodial solutions where your Bitcoin is held by a company. So think BitGo, which has wrapped Bitcoin. Right? You have a fast UX, but you completely trust the custodian. Then we moved on to the federated world, where Bitcoin was held by a group of signers, so think liquid federation. And trust is spread out, but um, you're, it's still not verifiable on chain. Then today we're at the start of something super exciting, which was only possible with uh, things like BitVM and the Cardinal protocol, which we released earlier this year. So Bitcoin is locked up on Bitcoin. And assist, this is a system that assumes everything is correct until challenged. So challenge windows give you anyone the right to dispute some sort of fraud. We have liveness monitors and liveness fallbacks, which we don't need to get into. And in the future, the industry is moving towards succinct proofs. But this is still in very much in the research pipeline at the moment. right? So the point is, we don't ask you for blind trust. We make the risk observable and the exit verifiable. The flow here is pretty simple. You lock the BDC into a taproot script address. Everything is predefined and pre-signed. This produces an unspent uh, output, so a UTXO, which represents that locked value. So a UTXO is not minted here, right, or created like an ERC-20 token. It's actually produced deterministically as an output of a transaction. So then you can use this representation. It can be spent in DeFi. So providing liquidity, lending, trading, and then once you're done, you can consume it. So the output is spent again. It's not burnt. Um, and then you can, of course, unlock the BDC UTXO on the Bitcoin side and spend it back in Bitcoin. So the key difference here between accounts models and uh, the, this UTXO model is nothing is burnt or minted. UTXOs are always produced and then spent. So a clean life cycle, which makes the system much more transparent and verifiable. And this is why there's so much synergy between the UTXO system of Cardano as well as uh, the one of Bitcoin. There's no wrapping in that conventional sense, right? So now let's get into where is the Bitcoin coming from? Where's the demand? Why do we think this is so exciting? So we know today that not every Bitcoiner wants Bitcoin, and that's totally fine. We know that roughly 12 to 13% of the supply of Bitcoin sits with institutions, with miners, with EDFs and companies. And these are groups that are fundamentally different. They value capital efficiency. So that's pretty much our starting audience. Um, we know that the number of treasury companies has exploded recently. There is around 335 that exist globally. This is data from this month. They're holding Bitcoin, and this is not even including the treasury companies, uh, similar entities for Ethereum, Solana, et cetera. In the last 30 days, there's been 27 new companies that have popped up, and this trend is continuous and it's global. So we know that there's a lot of investors that are buying stock in these companies rather than buying Bitcoin directly. Why do we think that is? 
These companies use TradFi tricks, in essence, to increase the Bitcoin per share, so the NAV per share, right? And they hope that this can possibly outperform holding Bitcoin directly. So one of the questions we ask within the Bitcoin DeFi team is, what really happens when you can put these sort of treasuries to work within DeFi instead of just enabling these giant bank-like structures to continue to emerge? So on the left here, you see a classic treasury that's simply holding Bitcoin. It's secure, but it's idle. The only way it grows is if the Bitcoin price increases. On the right, you see a DeFi-enabled treasury that puts the Bitcoin to work. It can earn yield through lending or liquidity. It can create arbitrage opportunities across markets, and it can attract professional market makers. But the shift in these innovations is not in either of these models. It's the plus sign in the middle. It's connecting them. It's being able to do the latter without compromising on the security and principles of the prior. So I'd like to end with that just to say that let's not compromise on the true rules of Bitcoin or the ethos of crypto. Um, we're here at the booth for a, a little bit of time. You're welcome to scan these two QR codes and book a pilot intake with us uh, over the next month or so. And you can also join our Telegram group, which we're going to be making much more active and having conversations with the community. Thank you so much for your time and hope to see you here at the booth. Hey.